Okay, this is our last video in our sequence for L'Hopital's rule and indeterminate forms. And in this one, we're going to explore indeterminate powers. So when you're looking at a limit as x goes to a of a function of x raised to a function of x, and you get one of the following three forms, 0 to the 0, infinity to the 0, or 1 to the infinity, this is called an indeterminate power, and you need to do more work. So this case right here, we're saying that f is going to 0 while g is going to 0, f is going towards infinity while g is going towards 0, or f is going to 1 while g is going towards infinity. Okay, so let's, let's illustrate what we would do by looking at two examples. All right, the first one is going to be, we're going to look at the limit. Let's try that again. We're going to look at the limit as x goes to infinity of x to the 1 over x. Okay, and as you notice, this right here, as x goes to infinity, goes to infinity, and 1 over x, as x gets big, goes towards 0. So this is an infinity to the 0 uh, type, which is an indeterminate power, which, we are, which means we're ready to proceed. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to let y be equal to x to the 1 over x. So that means that finding this limit is the same thing as finding, which is what I want, the limit of y. So this right here is what I'm looking for, okay? But I don't know how to do it. I only know how to work with products, quotients, um, differences. So what I'm going to do, as any good mathematician should do, is I'm going to see what I could do to reduce this to a case I already know. And that's going to involve getting this power down, which should make you all think of logs. So I'm going to take the natural log of both sides. Natural log of y equals the natural log of x to the 1 over x. I'm going to pull this down because that's why I did it. 1 over x times the natural log of x. Now I have a product here. So let's explore what happens as x goes to infinity of this product. This right here goes towards 0 and this right here goes towards infinity. Uh, so what I notice here is that this is an indeterminate product, which I know how to handle. But this is not the limit of y. This is the limit of the natural log of y. So let's write down what's happening. If I look at the limit as x goes to infinity of the natural log of y, which is equal to this, then I'm looking at the limit as x goes to infinity of 1 over x times ln of x. Right, so this right here goes to 0, this right here goes to infinity. I have an indeterminate product, which I know how to handle. I'm going to switch it to an indeterminate quotient. So notice this is equal to the limit as x goes to infinity of ln of x over x. Now I see the top still goes to infinity, but now the bottom goes to infinity. And so this is an indeterminate quotient, so L'Hopital's rule applies. So this limit which is equal to this limit, is equal to the limit as x goes to infinity of 1 over x over 1, which is just the limit, now notice how I'm including limits on all of my statements, of 1 over x, which as x gets big, this goes to 0, so this limit equals 0. But remember, I wanted that limit. So my next task is to figure out a way to write the natural log of y in terms of y, or better, y in terms of the natural log of y. But that's not too bad because I remember the relationship between y, ln of y, and e. So this is something that I'm going to pull out of my hat. y equals e to the ln of y, right, because these are inverse functions and they undo each other. So that if I take, if I raise, or if I take e to the natural log of y, then I'm just going to undo each other and I'm going to land back at y. Okay, so the limit as x approaches infinity of y, which remember, that's what I'm looking for, equals the limit as x goes to infinity of e to the ln of y. And what I just discovered up here is that as x goes to infinity, ln of y goes to 0. So this limit equals e to the 0 
which is 1. And remember, that's the limit I was looking for. So the limit as x goes to infinity of y, which is equal to x to the 1 over x, is 1. Perfect. All right, let's look at one more example. Let's say the limit as x approaches 1 of 2 minus x raised to the tangent of pi over 2 times x. Okay, so let's see what's happening here. As x goes to 1, 2 minus x goes to 1. And as x goes to 1, this right here goes towards pi over 2. And as I remember the graph of tangent, as I get close to pi over 2, tangent of that value gets approaches infinity. So this goes towards infinity as x goes to 1. So this is a 1 to the infinity type, which is an indeterminate power. So we're going to proceed as before. So we're going to let y equal 2 minus x to the tangent of pi over 2 times x. Good. We are now going to take the natural log of both sides, and we know that's going to bring that power down. So the tangent of pi over 2 times x, ln of 2 minus x. Be very careful and diligent about your parentheses. I'm now going to look at the limit as x goes to 1 of the natural log of y, which equals the limit as x goes to 1, oops, I almost wrote infinity, x goes to 1 of the tangent of pi over 2 times x times the natural log of 2 minus x. Okay, now what's happened is this is infinity as we discovered before, and this right here is 1, but the natural log of 1 is 0, so this is an infinity times 0, uh, which is an indeterminate product, which means we need to do some work to get it into an indeterminate quotient. All right, so this one's kind of tricky because I'm not sure which one I want to move down because both of those, um, once I put them as reciprocals, might be kind of yucky to find its derivative. But let's see something else about tangent. I could write this as the limit as x goes to 1 of the sine of pi over 2 times x over the cosine of pi over 2 times x times ln of 2 minus x. Okay, then notice what happens. As x goes to 1, sine of pi over 2 times 1 goes to sine of pi over 2, which is 1. And then this still goes towards 0. Now where does cosine go? Cosine of pi over 2 as x goes towards 1 goes to cosine of pi over 2, which is 0. So I have a 0 over 0 situation, which is an indeterminate quotient, and I'm ready to proceed. Okay, so now... We take the derivative of the top and the derivative of the bottom and then explore the limit again. So this is the limit as x goes to 1 of cosine of pi over 2x times the derivative of the inside, which is pi over 2, times, be careful, ln of 2 minus x plus uh, sine of pi over 2x times the derivative of this, which is 1 over 2 minus x times the derivative of the inside, which is minus 1. So what I'm going to do is just switch that to a minus. All over, so remember, that's a product rule on top, all over negative sine of pi over 2 times x. And although that looks gross, it might actually turn out to be nice. Let's see what happens. As x goes to 1, this piece right here goes towards 0. So 0 times and this one right here also goes to 0, so that piece is 0, minus, now this sine of pi over 2 as x goes to 1 is 1, over 2 minus 1, which is 1. Ooh, so the top is actually headed towards minus 1. Now what's going on to the bottom? Well, sine of pi over 2 times 1 is, si is sine of pi over 2, which is 1, so the bottom goes towards minus 1. So what I've discovered is that this limit actually goes to negative 1 over negative 1, which is 1. I'm halfway there. Actually, I'm 3 quarters of the way there. I've discovered that the limit as x goes to 1 of the natural log of y goes to 1. 
So my last step is to find out what I really came here to find out. What happens as x goes to 1 of y? Well, we know that's equal to the limit as x goes to 1 of e to the ln of y, which we just discovered went to 1. So this thing goes to e to the 1, or just e. Now go practice.